Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to our message here on Ascension Day. Our scripture reading today is from Acts 1, verse 1 to 11. That is Acts 1, from verse 1 to 11. And the heading there is, Jesus is taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was still alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates my father has said by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of God. Thanks be to him. Friends, today we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, the day he left this world to take up his rightful place at the right hand of his Father. After he rose from the dead, he spent 40 days on earth and proved to his disciples many times that he is still alive. And the fact that it was exactly 40 days is quite significant. Because 40 is a number that is found in the Bible a lot of times. 159 times to be exact. And it's spread across the Bible in both the Old and the New Testament. A few examples are three prom prominent figures, Moses, Elijah and Jesus, fasted in the desert for 40 days each. Each endured 40 days without food or water. As the ultimate test of their faith, they used their fasts to achieve specific goals. Moses proved his, his loyalty to God and then received the Ten Commandments. Elijah gained insight on how to lead the Israelites, and Jesus withstood the temptations of Satan. All of them passed their tests and understood the plans of God better. Then the Israelites were in the desert for 40 years. After being freed from slavery in Egypt, Moses and the Israelites were unsure of what to do next. God wanted them to find the promised land, but only after everyone who doubted him passed on. Then they travelled through the desert for 40 years, living on manna and quails, and God's lesson to them was to be patient. Then Ezekiel lied on his right side for 40 days to bear the iniquity of Judea's sins. He was instructed by God to lie on his left side for 390 days and on his right side for 40 days to bear the iniquities of Israel and Judea respectively. And that's the same number of years which each of these nations were unfaithful to God. Then three kings reigned for 40 years each, Saul, David and Solomon. And it's no coincidence because 40 years is a generation in the Bible. But for these three kings this, this time frame also contained a warning because for each of them it was 20 years of prosperity and 20 years of ruin. Because as Samuel predicted, eventually they'll take more from the people than they give. Then Goliath was an irritation under Israel's skin for 40 days before David defeated him. Before David and Goliath became legends, Goliath was just a massive Philistine soldier who humiliated Israelites. The Philistine and Israelites army stood on opposite sides for 40 days. And every day a new candidate went to meet Goliath only to be destroyed. 
After 40 days, a young shepherd from Bethlehem, David, was sent by God to defeat the Philistine. And then a new chapter for the, for the Israelites began, namely the strengthening of the kingdom of Israel. God destroyed every living thing on earth by flooding it for 40 days. Seeing that the sins of man were too great, God called on Noah, the firm believer, and instructed him to build an ark that could hold two of every living creature on earth, as well as Noah's family. God then flooded the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. When Noah and his family found the shore, God made a covenant that he would never flood the earth to such a degree again, and thus re-establishing a level of trust between him and his people that had been lost since Adam and Eve. Overall, 40 is a number associated with testing and hardships one must endure to become spiritually mature and aware. And then Jesus stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection to spend time with his disciples, to give them advice and instructions, to tie up loose ends as to who he really is. The 40 days between Jesus' resurrection and his ascension are some of the most significant days of his life on earth, but so often is the least talked, talked about. In his resurrected body, he could walk and talk, and he even ate with those he appeared to, showing that he was physically alive. He was also able to appear and disappear, even behind closed doors. And with this, Jesus publicly announced that he had risen from the dead. These are the events between the resurrection of Jesus and his ascension into heaven. Firstly, there was his resurrection. Then he appears to Mary Magdalene. He appears then to a group of women. Then he appears to two believers on the road to Emmaus. Jesus then appears to Peter. Jesus appears to the apostles behind locked doors. Jesus appears to the apostles including Thomas. Jesus provides a miraculous catch of fish. Jesus reconciles with Peter. Jesus then commissions his disciples to teach and baptize all nations. Jesus appears to more than 500 people at the same time. Then Jesus appears to James and only after that he ascended into heaven. Jesus makes a point firstly to reconcile with his disciples and secondly to commission them to take his message, message of salvation into the world. Jesus lets his disciples know once and for all who he really is by opening their hearts and opening their minds. Finally they understood clearly that Jesus truly is the Son of God, the one who came to free us from ourselves, from our sins. He's more than just a military leader will overthrow the government. He is the one and only spiritual leader who paid for our sins, who conquered death. Jesus took these 40 days to put into perspective for his disciples everything he told them during his ministry, and now everything made sense. They were with Jesus for plus minus three years, witnessing everything Jesus did, miracles performed, lessons taught, and every person's life that he changed. But they didn't fully understand who Jesus was, or what he was about, until they saw for themselves. Until they saw that Jesus really overcame death, so that they also may live. Jesus explained to them that they should not be afraid, because they won't be left alone. The Holy Spirit will be their helper. The Holy Spirit will be with them, with us, always to guide us, to follow his way. His way of righteousness, of faith, of hope, of love. Jesus reconciles with his disciples, because now their sins are all forgiven. Our celebration today is that Jesus changed the course of history, his, changed the course of history in a dramatic way. Just as he gave his disciples 40 more days after his resurrection to finally accept him as the only way to salvation, he gives you and me a new day every day of our lives to come clean with him. To accept him as our only way to salvation. Every day is a brand new gift from God, a second chance to live our lives according to his will. But remember, we don't know when will be our last day. It could be 40 more days, 40 more years, even today could be our last day. Nobody knows. The first generation of Christians 
believed that the second coming of Christ would be in, still in their lifetime. And in a way they were not wrong, because all of us have only our lifetime to prepare for the day he returns, or calls us home. And on that day it would be terrible to be caught without oil in our lamps, like the five foolish virgins. Because the thing is, Jesus provided salvation for all. We all know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But Jesus doesn't force himself on anyone. Yes, he loves the whole world. And his free gift of salvation is an offer to everyone. But his our choice to believe or not is not compulsory. And each of us have one of two choices, with one of two guaranteed outcomes. It's as simple as that. So in conclusion, what is Jesus doing in heaven, where he ascended to? Well, Jesus told his disciples exactly in John 14, verse 1 to 4. The message translation puts it very clear. Don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me, there is plenty of room for you in my father's home. If it weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I will come back and get you, so you can live where I live, and you already know the road I'm taking. Just imagine, if you will, the room Jesus is preparing for you. It must be absolutely mind-blowing. Because if you think about it, Jesus healed people in an instant. He performed miracles immediately. Yet to prepare your room is taking almost 2,000 years already. So if Jesus takes that long to prepare for you and me, 40 or 80 or whatever years we have here on earth, is certainly not too much to ask to prepare for him. And if you are not prepared for Jesus to take you from this world, do not put it off any longer. Do not waste another second. Make today a turning point in your life. Amen.